Hello everybody, what is up? Welcome back to my channel, Third World Miss Explores. My name is Bonolo. Thank you so much for joining me again if you are indeed returning and if it's the first time, I hope you find a pertinent enough reason to stay. I've been really getting into Africana history for my series Who Messed Up South Africa. Episode 3 is coming up very soon. Please look out for that. I promise it's coming. I to just hold on a second. A couple of shout outs that I'd like to make to some people who have been really supportive and really kind to me. My channel has been able to gain some traction, got encouragement, or showed me that I'm really not alone in my content creation journey. Neither am I alone in my personal journey. It's a really good feeling to have while um, when you feel like you're alone. They make really great content, but they have a special place in my heart because they've shown me so much love and care. I just didn't expect it and it feels good. Many, many, many thanks for for helping me raise funds you follow me on twitter you might know a little bit about that just making creating videos and having the kind of youtube presence that i want to have kind of difficult for me i'll leave a link for my back buddy crowdfunding campaign their channels in the description as well so that you guys can actually go and follow them and support and do the right thing because i love them they're my people and they deserve it for today's video, I basically wanted to do you know, an exploration of the history of one of the most uh, historic places in South Africa, that is the town of Stellenbosch in the equally historic province of the Western Cape, which is where quite a lot of drama in South African history took place. And to give some more historical background into the content that is in episode 3 of who messed up South Africa because I can't put everything absolutely into those videos. There's a lot of dynamics in the race relations that are interesting to look at. White Africana history, the history of the language, and especially the history of some Africana strongholds might hold some answers to the questions that I have. Like what is happening right now in the Western Cape? Education department wanting to seek legal action against one of the schools in their jurisdiction, why the Democratic Alliance wants to compel a civil society organization to withdraw funding from a public university. What the hell is Cape Pips Exit? Cape Exit. Cape Exit. Cape Exit. Okay. Sisi Kampepe released her report on racism at Stellenbosch University. I think that was sparked by a white student urinating on a black student's belongings. Charlize, Charlize made some ignorant statements about Afrikaans, but we'll address that, okay? <laughs> Well, Stellenbosch is one of the oldest urban areas in South Africa. They did discover Paleolithic stone tools, which is evidence of a prehistoric African civilization that populated the area. But the town of Stellenbosch, as we know it in the Western Cape today, was founded in 1679 by Dutch East India official Governor Simon van der Staal. Established the town on the banks of the first river that he ran into on an expedition addition of the Cape Flats and surrounding areas and he named this river the Easter Rafir, the first river and he named the town that he would found around it after himself Stell's Bush. The town just grew and grew from there becoming an independent local authority as well as the seat of a magistrate. First school opened over there in 1685 but they only started administrating seriously for education in 1866 with the establishment of Stellenbosch Gymnasium which was allocated as a secondary school but in 1874 some of the higher classes became Victoria College, the British were already in the picture at this stage and then in 1918 the University of Stellenbosch was established. I just wanted to give a brief brief history of how the town as we know it today came to be. There was a significant uh, Huguenot population in the Cape Colony at the time because I think they were just having the toughest time in Europe. Franzuk is called that because there was such a great concentration of 
French Huguenots in the area. Originally the Decouches, I don't know, the Pouf, a French Protestant noble family who owned castles by the same names. In the Decouche commune, I don't know what a commune is, ended up in Amsterdam and eventually became Dutchified. They also had homes in Le Marais, a very popular Afrikaans surname as well. The progenitor of the Kutsia family established one of the most prominent wine estates in the district of Stellenbosch, Kutzenberg, on the banks of the first river on land granted to him by Governor van der Stel. Get this. In 1706, he organized a revolt along with other Huguenots in the area to oust Governor van der Stel for having a huge ass estate. Second of all, he seemed to have monopolized the wine industry, the meat industry, as well as trading in general. So all of these people were intermarrying, kind of sharing resources, networking amongst themselves all the time. So that over the generations, the identity of the elite in the Cape remained roughly the same, white and rich. Yanni Mere was a descendant of Der Kutsier and he was born on the Kutzenberg estate in 1851. He was also educated at Stellenbosch Gymnasium. After finishing school, Yanni and three of his brothers went diamond prospecting near the Vaal River but later moved on to New Rush as Kimberley in the Northern Cape is now known and they made a fortune. With the money that he made in New Rush, Dirk and his brothers put together several of their mining interests to create the Kimberley Central Mining Company. Sometime after that, Yanni Murray and his brothers took their shares and all of their interests and joined Rhodes' De Beers Mines Consolidated. As you can guess, they made tons and tons and tons of money. In 1892, Yanni went back to Kutzenberg and purchased the estate from his now widowed mother and he started diversified farming over there. But they call his story rags to riches which doesn't make sense to me unless at some point in time Kutzenberg became an impoverished place or maybe yeah maybe it was just really hard for them to start out with the whole estate on the banks of a river that nobody else could access but well it came back exorbitantly rich Yanni Marais money made that province. If you hear somebody talking about the political or the economic power of Stellenbosch or the influence of Stellenbosch, then they're talking about probably an organization that Yanni Marais was involved in. So in 1914, with 16 other men, Yanni Murray went to meet at the home of a prominent banker in Stellenbosch. They all agreed that the following year they would establish the Nationale Pers Beper or the National Press Limited. And Yanni put up most of the money for the free and unimpeded expression of public opinion on all major issues in our country, the commercial and service imperative complementing each other. The first project that Naspers undertook, I don't know if you remember, but from episode one of Who Messed Up South Africa, the Burger newspaper, the mouthpiece of the National Party, the party of apartheid. The next year they published Heis Genoot, which is very popular. Charlize is always on the cover of that, I think. And he was also involved in the establishment of the University of Stellenbosch. There was some intervention by the Prime Minister in 1874. I'm not sure what the intentions or, you know, what his motivations were at the time because he was anti-imperialist. He didn't want Freya Burgers to now have to submit to the foreign authority of British officials. He was also very supportive of the Afrikaner cause. So it would also be the case that he believed that Afrikaans as one of the less official languages because it was English and Dutch spoken by the servants, the slaves, the less educated Afrikaners and white people needed to be promoted so that everybody could take part in the representative democracy that he was so fascinated in. So I'm not sure exactly why Prime Minister Maltino, as well as a delegation from Victoria College, which was a part of Stellenbosch Gymnasium, they went to see the Cape administration. The said to them, okay, no, so good. If you can give us 100,000 pounds, we will allow you to establish this university. And Yanni Marais was like, guys, I have a billion pounds in 
the year of our Lord 1915. I'll give you a billion pounds. If the University of Stellenbosch was going to give Afrikaans or Dutch and English equal status um, as a medium, he got it dead. After his death, the rest of his estate that was left was used to establish the Het Jan Marais Foundation, which is a scholarship fund that only supports Afrikaans speaking students in need. Yeah. So as I've mentioned before, Stellenbosch, the town or the university itself is sometimes called the cradle of Afrikaner and nationalism and the reason for that is because six out of seven of all apartheid presidents went to get an education at that place between 1910 and 1971. Um, episode three of Who Messed Up South Africa is actually a deep dive into Afrikaner and nationalism which is why I, I felt like I had to break it down into the main bit and like supplementing bits but I hope I'm giving you context because the development of white Afrikanerdom as a culture is very much tied into the development of the political ideology that made um, apartheid and white minority rule possible in South Africa. When you're engaging on topics about uh, Afrikaner nationalism, they are not making the distinction between what is their culture and what is a very harmful political ideology as it stands now Stellenbosch is one of the top universities in South Africa and in Africa internationally it places in the top 200 for law politics and geography in the top 100 internationally for development studies agriculture theology and forestry Um, let's talk a little bit about this NASPERS internet technology and multimedia multinational company based in Cape Town with interest in online retail venture capital as well as in publishing NASPERS has always been strongly supportive of apartheid that is just embarrassing how just on the table that is you know and then all they did was kind of yeah, yeah guys I'm sorry they refused to appear before the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Just remember that the Western Cape and Stellenbosch itself houses one of the top universities in South Africa and in Africa, old colonial wealth situated all in one place and everybody is networking together. And then as well, NASPERS uh, with its headquarters in the Western Cape, they control a lot of the narrative in the media in South Africa. Just a little recap, after the establishment of the town of Stellenbosch, we saw the proliferation of prominent Afrikaner, English and other European families building a network of influence and wealth in the area to be able to control politics and the economy of the area. In looking at the history of Stellenbosch and some of the interesting people that we find in Stellenbosch, obviously some questions arise. Um, the endangerment of minority rights in South Africa. Are minority rights in danger in South Africa? Now, the people who are advocating for minority rights in South Africa actually turn out not to be minorities. And the reason that I say they're not minorities is because in the stats, you make up the smallest percentage, but then economically, you wield the most influence. I don't think that's what a minority is. With regard to the rights of white Afrikaners, I would say no. Where minority rights are endangered in South Africa and that organizations like AfriForum, Solidariteit, and people like Ronaldo Gos, what they don't care about is the actual minorities in South Africa, black women, women, children, LGBTQIA plus people, or formerly disadvantaged people 
those are the minorities but because they actually make up a larger share a big proportion of the population they are left out of the conversation of minority rights and being drowned out by people with resources funding as well as reach to be able to influence politics and the economy to go their way where it has already been going their way it's this diversity intervention happening at the school that apparently traumatized some of the children The teachers had to leave the children. The children were so traumatized by what they were told in that intervention that the Western Cape Education Department now wants to lay charges. Yeah, apparently, a student ran out and went to tell a teacher, hey, they're critical race theorying us in there, and all hell broke loose. If you feel empowered to go and report something and you know that you're going to get recourse, is is that usually what happens for minorities it seems like what happened is this consulting firm maybe wanted to give them um a decolonized view of south african history as we do on this channel but for the western cape education department to lead the backlash and to specifically make it about the danger of critical race theory traumatizing children i think there they're showing their asses minority rights are in danger but it's not the minorities you're thinking you're not just a minority because there's less people like you in the country representation needs to matter on the real because what's happening now in the western cape is that the democratic alliance the ruling party over there and they constantly run on the ticket that they have the best run cities in south africa even though you know there is no best run city in south africa because nowhere in south africa is there equality nowhere in south africa is there equity the da has given themselves so much leverage positing themselves as opposite and therefore better than the ANC. When people criticize the DA for totally neglecting the black sectors of their demographics in the Western Cape, supporters of the DA will defend this behavior by the DA by saying that, oh, but if it's the black people in the township struggling, why aren't you complaining to the EFF or to the ANC? Yeah, you can't be for the people but then actively work against the interests of the people. You're untrustworthy. The Cape is the province in South Africa with the highest concentration of white people, which is why the political portfolios need to be diversified in the Cape. Like, it's so funny to me how the same people who can argue for Cape independence will also argue that 30 years is more than enough time for the ANC to have improved on everything that happened in this country since 1652. Make it a make a sense. A big proportion of underrepresented black people in the Western Cape, in Cape Town, in Stellenbosch, that are being spoken for as if they're not there. When you think about how the black people of the Cape became disenfranchised, became dispossessed, became depressed, that the same families, the same organizations, the same power structures are telling them, we know what's best for you, what Charlize said. I didn't like it because it was very ignorant and once again it erased Afrikaner speakers who are not white. She could have at least educated herself. Don't let colonial or white minority rule um, institutions tell you your history. Separating you from so many beautiful people that you share a country with but you refuse to see them as your fellow countrymen because in your institutions, in your history, 
in your family, in your schools, in your churches, in your businesses. It's all about keep Afrikaans at the top of everything. You refuse to engage with history because, oh, it's Afrikaner history. I don't care that's Afrikaner. Make up your own mind. So that was it. A short history of Stellenbosch and the Western Cape in general. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it informative. Um, and I hope my opinions made sense. I really hope I'm able to do more of these videos just so that I'm not spending so long stressing on a video, editing, scrapping. I want to say thank you so much to my friends who helped me. I hope I will see you in episode 3 of Who Messed Up South Africa. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Bye. Why am I wearing these glasses today? I'm not gonna look kind of good in there. Let's get this video started.